committee meeting for May 28th, 2020, and it's seven o'clock. And present at the moment is Louis Mission. Bill Mayor of PC. Tim Hilchey. Pete Ma. And anybody else been there? Everybody else is on, but I guess we haven't. Uh... Is uh, Mark Stinson there? I'm here. I'm here, Louis. <laughs> Hi, Mark. How are you? Good. Okay. Uh, how about Tony there, or Yan anybody from Yankee Candle? I see Tony. Tony's supposed to be here. I'm here. I can you hear me? I hear you, Tony. Yep. Yeah. Just barely. Can you hear me? A little better. There we go. I hear you really strong. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yeah. Now we can. Yeah, much better. Okay. Okay, uh, let's see, what, what we have here is a, uh, I guess we'll start with the uh, notice of intent for uh, Newell Brands, Yankee Candle for a minor parking lot redevelopment. And uh, could you just state who you are for uh, representing Yankee Candle, if, if you could? Uh, Anthony Wanseski, uh, senior engineer with SVE Associates in Brattleboro, Vermont. Okay. Bill Anybody Swayze. else? Uh, Bill Swayze, director of facilities for Yankee Candle. Okay, thank you. Uh, I guess, Tony, you want to just explain what's going on over there and what the intent yeah. is? Yes. Um, well, this is the facility um, that has had quite a bit of work done on it um, this past year. It's uh, Newell Brands Yankee Candle, their research and development building. Um, this building was uh, had a major expansion done to it in 1987. In your project description, there's an attachment of uh, the, o uh, I think it was O'Leary plan that, um, that uh, <clears throat> constructed that expansion. So on the northwest side, which would be the older building, not the expanded building, um, there uh, is a gravel parking area, which also is a gravel drive that gives access around the building. Um, because of the new upgrades with um, this building for Yankee Candle, um, they want to, um, you know, the, the gravel area, as we saw, if you were out at the um, site visit, um, uh, is um, in okay shape. But, you know, the, the maintenance of it and plowing over the, um, over the years, we've got mounds of, of, uh, of gravel in that at the north um, end, which is um, within the riverfront, the Bloody Brook. Um, you'll see on our plan that we... Uh, plot the resources. We've got wetlands um, flagged by uh, Ward Smith of Wendell Wetland Services. Uh, we've plotted the floodplain. We tied it to GPS, so we were we were able to um, plot the floodplain fairly accurately, um, and also the mean high water, so that we could get the riverfront. So on the northern end of this, uh, the old building pre 1987 is in the riverfront. And also um, a portion of the parking and access is in the riverfront. Um, back when they did this design, the, the concept was to grade away from the building, parking, and drain to a swale that was a direct discharge to Bloody Brook. Now, over the years of plowing and all of that, that, that swale has been filled. Um, there's piles down at the other end. And so that swale is compromised, it's not function, and um, in heavy storms we could get sediment running to uh, the Bloody Brook. In order to clean this up, 
being in the riverfront, 1058, you have to improve conditions to do this. And Yankee Candle would like to pave just that extended portion, um, as you can see on the plan, uh, northwest uh, opposite the, the old portion of the building uh, to provide additional parking for employees and also honor the access around the building that is currently there for um, not only for them but also for emergency access. So um, we're only going to pave what's necessary um, for operations, and what would it would do is match with the paving that was done um, back in 1987 for the addition there. So we're just going to extend that out. And so that would be a 50-foot strip from the building out. Currently, the gravel parking area, it varies, but gets to as much as 56, 57 feet wide. And as I said, the swale has been compromised. It's not there anymore. So our improvements are there's, um, and Mark had commented, there's numerous ways to do improvements, um, you know, significantly reduce impervious areas, um, planting indigenous plant species, providing stormwater management demonstrably in excess of what is required per the regulation, and removal and proper disposal of noxious but otherwise legally located materials. So <clears throat> we don't really... Um, um, number one, the gravel is old, so it's very hard. We're not going to get much in the way of, of um, uh, infiltration in that gravel area. It's pretty compact. So if we were to think of that as somewhat impervious, we are going to reduce the amount of, of gravel area because I was saying we're only going to pave what's necessary. So we, we, we reduce, um, reduce that gravel area, and within the riverfront it would be about 385 square feet. Um, planting indigenous plant species, well, we're right in, there's woods all around this area, so it didn't make sense to me to plant any, any additional stuff because we're not really going to affect the, the wood growth or in that area. Um, so that didn't make sense. The thing that made the most sense to us to improve the riverfront and improve both water quality and reduce um, peak volume, uh, rate of volume discharge to Bloody Brook would be to... Um, uh, yeah. dem you know, demonstrably improved the stormwater system. So back in 87, they had a swale, and back then you could do straight discharges and, and so forth, and it's very wide at the opening there. That's now had tree growth because it has not been maintained and, and it's filled. So what we're planning on doing is we're going to continue the grade as was originally designed away <clears> from the building in the paved area, and we're going to create a water quality swale and we're also going to install two um, dry wells and have a, an equalizer connector pipe there that would also be perforated and be um, act as a, as a water quality swale that would provide infiltration. So um, being a redevelopment, you only have to meet standards to the maximum extent practical. We, because we can do it here and we have good soils and water tables very low, we've provided you with... Uh, soil evaluations uh, for, uh, uh, you know, we did a test pit in, in, in the stormwater management plan. You'll see that. Um, we um, can go ahead and drain. We can infiltrate the required volume um, for the pavement that we are going to install. We reduce peak flow for the 10-year storm, and um, therefore we will improve water quality and slightly reduce um, peak flow to Bloody Brook from um, the um, um, from this area because this water quality swale will be ponded at about six inches. So um, oh, you'll I did see. Uh, oh, there you go. I don't know if I can I get access it. to it. Can you? Are you? Can you people see my mouse moving back and forth on it or no? Probably can. No. I no. have to give you permission to do that, but. Um, no, the, I, got, I, got, I guess the, I got it. Yeah, so the two circles are the dry well areas, and there's a connector pipe. And at the end of the parking area, there'll there'll be a berm there. So it's going to hold six inches of water. If we get more rain, that would fill the dry wells, fill the pipe, get the six inches. It will top over then. And uh, what we're trying to do is is to provide positive outflow. So we want to somewhat establish what that swale was before, but nowhere near the width that it was as, as designed back in 87. Um, and we've got an opening through the trees to do that, so we don't have to cut anything to do that. 
Um, we will be providing erosion control along that northerly edge and anywhere outside of the yeah, disturbed table. area. And, um, and it's a pretty simple plan. And um, um, if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer those for you. <coughs> yeah. Uh, Tim, do you have anything seeing you, you weren't there or? Yes, actually, <clears throat> I wanted to apologize to everyone for not, I mismarked my calendar and I thought the site visit was tonight. So, Julie, is it possible for you to move your cursor around and show me the, the work area? Okay, uh, here is, uh, five and 10 is right here. I'm not sure how you, enlarge it or anything so this is five and ten right here headed north and this is the the building here north street is over here yeah I'm not seeing it north street and here's the front of the uh, building off of uh elm street right here so it's that parking lot you can see when you're going down five and ten there's a paved area and then mm -hmm. the trees then the trees start and then th this area is hard packed gravel so we did we did the site visit peter and bill and i and uh it really is just going to be minor grading to get the blacktop or asphalt on there mm -hmm. and this area here where they're going to have a swale with the dry wells dry wells are right here these two and okay. and then uh then if there is overflow and everything it heads down this way i believe right tony uh, i can't see your cursor really but oh. it's that it's that it's that um like that finger that comes off of the parking lot to the north yeah that's so, where so we, yeah. Yeah, we have go minor ahead. grading there just to provide positive drainage away from the parking area. And that'll go through the hole in the trees that we witnessed when we were out there. That's why it's kind of turned that way. If you remember when you're out there, you could see that the hole in the tree line kind of turns to that, um, turns to the right a little bit as it heads there. And it's still um, where that, where the end of that grading is um, to the wetland boundary is, it's still 65 feet or so away from that um uh natural area that won't be touched and and what on either side of that it won't be touched it'll be left alone and the area will be so, cleaned up the piles of gravel in that will be removed and um you know just be cleaned up in that area so the um the total gravel area is is how many square feet and you are reducing it by 300 and something well uh, the way i've presented it because that's the way we typically present it um, for um, notice of intent um, in the um, um, in the project description you'll get a, you'll get um, uh, 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 some some information here the total lot area is 6.1 acres the approximate total um, area within riverfront is 75,680 square feet the percentage of riverfront is in the lot is 28.5 percent previously altered riverfront was 26,530 square feet and previous permanently altered riverfront is 11,040 square feet and I get that off of the previous um, expansion 1987 plan so then if you look at specific impacts and this is only in the riverfront it's not in the parking lot to the south outside of the re uh, resource area uh, existing altered uh, riverfront area, 3,485 square feet. Proposed altered area would be 3,100 square feet. So we reduced the altered area about 385 square feet, which is reducing that, um, um, you know, that gravel area. You'll see, I don't know if you can see it, you probably have to blow up, um, but there's a dashed line that um, uh, shows the... Um, uh, uh, existing edge of the gravel way, which is right at the tree line along that whole westerly side. And we don't need to go out that far. We want to not touch those trees and provide um, space in there to create uh, create the square. Yeah, it. It, won't, it won't be very deep because 
the reason why I have two uh, dry wells there is between the dry wells will be a high point. So you can see from the edge of the pavement, uh, the existing pavement now to that high point, they'll drain um, about, um, you know, 40, about 50 feet each way. So you got like a little sawtooth action in there. So we don't make the swale very deep. It's not going to be pronounced. And um, it's just a way of capturing and holding water and promoting infiltration. Um, even even in, in um, say, uh, springtime when you have frozen ground and, um, and no real way to infiltrate with the dry wells, we'll be able to get warm water in there and get it treated and, and, and provide some infiltration where... Now we've got some good soil, so when it drains off the gravel, what doesn't discharge out um, will get into the ground. So we're fortunate to be able to do this type of design because of the soils we have on site. So just so I'm clear, <clears throat> when I'm looking at the Newell Brands building, um, to the left of it is parking. Is that going to be new parking? Is that the gravel you're covering? Yes, that's existing used area. It's the hard packed gravel. We're just going to pave it so we can clean it up. It'll make the maintenance much better and, in my opinion, reduce potential sediment loading to Bloody Brook. Okay. We'll be and trapping all of that in that area. So this is my, my final topical question. Um, Deerfield just adopted a green infrastructure policy that encourages use of pervious pavement and that sort of thing. Um, is, is the compaction on this site such that that's not an option? Yeah, there are a couple of reasons um, um, that I didn't go that way is because I had the room, um, and this is considered LID. This would be a considered um, um, uh, low impact development design. Uh, because of the infiltration and so forth. We don't have curbs. I don't have the room to do vegetated buffers or anything like that, but we do have the water quality swale, and we do have, um, you know, the, the dry dry wells. Um, it's been around. This hard-packed gravel in that base has been in for um, quite some time. So for us to um, be able to use some sort of pervious pavement, we'd tear up probably three foot of depth in there. It'd be a much larger um, excavation in that so that we could put it back and, and hopefully promote drainage. The other thing, I don't particularly like um, doing um, pervious pavement in an industrial commercial kind of use. Um, at, um, uh, in, a, in, in residential uses or straight parking areas, um, it uh, it works fine. Um, place uh, one of the places where I've designed that before, um, and it works pretty well. Um, is if you've ever been um, up the Kringle Candle, not on the side where the farm table is, but across the way where they have the manufacturing. Those parking lots there are pervious pavement. The aisles, though, because they had trailer trucks, that was the first part of the business there. Um, is uh, regular stormwater pave, uh, regular pavement. Um, so there are there are applications for it. I didn't think that this would be a good application because of the use of the property. Okay, thank you. And the amount of disturbance. Um, you know, we can accomplish the same thing outside the edge of that pavement area with the um, with the with the sub drain uh, connection and and the dry wells. We'll 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 get the same benefit. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Tim. Tim. Uh, yeah, we were out there yesterday, and it isn't what's there now is not the gravel. It's a hard pack. They want to call it a dense graded material, crushed stone, and it is hard as a rock. Is it that so, stuff that's basically ground up asphalt and and other kinds of stuff? And well, yeah, stone dust and crushed stone, and the state has used it for years, and that's one of the main things is it it packs hard. So, you know, just after uh, seeing what the proposal is, I feel that it, there is a big improvement in that whole area with this. Sure. You know, with the, with the swale, because it is it is a mess. It needs to be regraded, 
that swale area, well, there's no swale, just cleaned up next to the woods. And uh, I, I, I personally think it would be a big improvement. And knowing Yankee Candle, how they take care of everything. I know there's a maintenance uh, plan for that swale to mow it and keep it clean. And if you look around the place, it is definitely uh, well kept. So, you know, I, I, I feel real comfortable with what's proposed here. And it is an improvement, I feel. I don't know about Bill there, if you got any comments. Yes, I, I also agree that the the plan as it is, is going to, um, uh, you know, continue to improve the, the area, especially that back um, uh, at the far end of the parking lot. Um, I also believe that the, uh, the contractor or, or that Anthony has made a, a good point that this will improve the safety of those that are driving in the parking lot. So I concur and Okay. Yeah, and, and um, I think my questions have been answered. I, I meant to, I planned to ask these things last night so I wouldn't take up time during the meeting, but it's been clearly explained and I, I understand. Uh, Peter, you got any comment there? Or? Oops, sorry, I was on mute. Um, no, the uh, site walk yesterday and it, um, it looks like a yeah, you know, it's a good plan. It's going to be a nice improvement. I think things are thought through, so I'm fine. Okay. Any anybody out there have comments on this from the uh, public, if, or whoever is out there? If you could speak, and state who you are. Up, Louis, I uh, I am here. I've been in since seven o two. I had some connection issues. This is Ben Byrne. Oh, okay, Ben. Thank you. You got any questions, Ben? No, no, I think it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, I'm familiar with the area. Um, I think that'll be uh, a good move. Okay, a anybody else out there? Have any questions or comments? <clears throat> no? Uh, okay. Uh, well, I... I make a motion that we uh, sign off on on the notice of intent here. I I have no uh, extra uh, order of conditions to add to it. It's you know that like Tony was saying. I think Mark had mentioned a few things, and uh, there is you know there's no room to put any type of extra planting in. I think. The grass is a big improvement in what's there. And uh, they got the trees right alongside everything. So, you know, you'd be cutting trees down to add trees, I think, or bushes or whatever. So I, I, I'm happy with this. If anybody. Uh... This is Jen Gannett. Um, I just wanted to say Sharon Rogolowski, or she, she said she's all set. She typed in a message. So I don't know what oh. that means. She she just oh. wrote all set. So maybe she likes it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So no, that's, that's all right. Oops, so I get rid of. I'd second your motion, Louis. Okay. Yeah, I made make a motion that we uh, sign off on the uh, notice of intent here with no added order of conditions, as I yeah. feel. I'll second. All, all, all in favor? Louis Mission, aye. aye. Mayor PC. Ben Byrne, aye. Pete Law, aye. Okay. I think we're all set there. Other than I think what we'll have to do is like we did before, is we'll have uh, next week we'll have uh, Sue in the office uh, put the uh, order conditions out to be signed in the entryway there by the police station, if everybody can do that. And yep. Ben, you, t you too. Yes, I completely forgot about the last one. I'm gonna get down there tomorrow morning and sign those. Those two, okay. Yeah, those two are, are waiting, so. All right, uh, I think we're all set there on that one, Tony. 
Oh, that's great. Uh, and thank you all for your help, and uh, we really appreciate it. And once you have it signed, if you would have Sue um, get in touch with me, I'll make um, uh, provisions to come down and pick up the document and get it recorded um, so that we'll have that part taken care of. Okay, on the certificate of compliance, you want to uh, hang in there for that, or? Yes, I will. I'll hang in for that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we have a certificate of compliance for 15 Merrigan Way, the DuPont Corporation. Uh, we uh, we're waiting on the uh, a little more growth of grass and uh, making sure the uh, erosions erosion, erosion problem was taken care of, which it was earlier, I believe, and. We went out and did a site visit, Bill and Peter and myself. And things are growing pretty good. It's a flat area and the area where the erosion was, they seeded with sod. And so there's no way there's gonna be much, any flow into that retention basin. So, I guess I'm open for comments from the other other people here. Or any anybody who's got questions? No, I, I in my solo site business visit tonight, I think it was much improved from the last time we visited. Everything looks a lot better um, established, and uh, so I'm fine. Yeah, let me just Pete lie. I didn't see the, the before pictures, but uh, certainly the after, it looks great. <laughs> Did a nice job there. And Bill Mayor of PC, I, I do concur. I, I saw the before and the after. Definitely the erosion control has been resolved. Okay, well, I make a motion to sign off on the certificate of... Uh, Compliance for 15 Merrigan Way. I'll second that motion. Bill Mayor PC. All in favor? Louis Mission, aye. Tim Hilchy, aye. 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 Bill Mayor aye. PC, aye. Is that you, Pete? Yes, uh, Pete Law, aye. Yep. And Ben? Ben, I think there. I did hear. Oh, I, yeah, I said I. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I think we talked over each other once. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of tough here. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's see. We also have a emergency cert for Mass DLT Route Five and Ten up by. Uh, Richardson's Candy Kitchen for uh, culvert clean out. It's, uh, as you all well know, it's it's an area there the town is worried about and it creates a hazard when it does heavy rain. It floods over five and 10 and it does flood in the back for and uh, impedes emergency vehicles. So, that there I rolled by today, they actually were, I think, wrapping it up or pretty close to that. And I know Mark had some questions on it. Are you still there, Mark? Yeah, I'm still here. Yep. And yeah, I just, uh, when I saw the emergency permit, I didn't really see much information on the, uh, you know, in, ter in terms of what the problem was. So I didn't know if one of you guys had actually stopped by and saw it. And if it's an ongoing problem, you know, then then next time I'd be hesitant about issuing an emergency permit. If it's an ongoing problem, they should be addressing it the usual way instead of yeah. going for an emergency permit all the time. Yeah, I'm not sure how that was working with the town and did Rob get a hold of you? Yeah, I got an email from him tonight. Oh. He uh, he explained a little, but not much. Yeah, I was. I talked to him. Well, I emailed him, and 
he said he would uh, get in contact with you. I was under the impression that it was, I don't know why it was emergency, sir. I, don't they have a, uh, like a no, going? There's no, no, there's no exemption for DOT to do that. No, no, but don't they have a uh, an approved cleaning maintenance plan for culverts? No, not, not the state. No, absolutely not. Okay, I, they have I to just go through of, the process just like everyone else. Okay, I was kind of under the impression that things were there's a set kind of standard that they go by, and uh, you know that's that's what it was. No, they're subject to the same rules. Okay. So the only thing tonight is just you know uh, ratify it just to make it totally legal. Yeah, that's all. No, I wrote uh, what I did see was I didn't stop, but it, it did look, you know, pretty good what they did. And I didn't see, you know, too much of any issues. And, okay. you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to take a ride by again, take a look at it. But All right. And I can talk to Rob about it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, no, I just, like I said, I thought it was like some of the town has a maintenance plan for cleaning culverts or something like that. I didn't, I didn't know how that was work, how that worked out actually. Okay. I just assumed it would be something that they have a contract and they go through and do the, uh, do the call, you know, clean out the culverts. Well, the thing is the town, towns can have one. They yeah. would have to submit, you know, a, what we call a bundled notice of intent, but this state, it's not practicable. Because each district has what 50, 60 towns, and they'd 56. have to get a separate yeah. order of conditions for each town. So it just oh. doesn't make sense for them to do it. Oh, okay. No, I thought maybe because of that, DEP gives them a blanket. Blanket. No. Uh, so they got to go between to every town if they're going to go in and do some cleaning. Is that well, it? My they typically don't unless it's an emergency. Oh, okay. So they don't do this routinely. Yeah. All right. Okay. I only heard about this um, uh, <clears throat> last week from the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness uh, Core Group had a meeting, and Kevin Scarborough mentioned that there was some emergency work taking place and that during this emergency that they had a 30 day window to do something and that they were already starting it. Um, is that something that Mark, you could say anything well, about? The emergency permit that was issued is valid for 30 days. And there is no ability to extend it on part on by the commission, any extension has to come through DEP. So the, the permit that, that Tony issued or that uh, Louis issued was good for 30 days, period. And you can set conditions on that just like you would for an order of conditions or anything else you issue. Okay. All right. Uh, while you're there, Mark, yeah. Uh, I have a question, and I, I know you had a couple comments on our minutes. Yeah, just clarification, I, that's all. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I, you know, I didn't look them over here, just looking at them now, at, before, well, beforehand. And I, I, see, I see what your comments are. Uh, the questions I do have on that notice of intent. Which one? On the uh, Kelleher Drive. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The uh, last last month's uh, minutes. Right. And I don't know if anybody I saw those other comments, but under yes, the order. Did. Okay. Uh, I was going to say we received the minutes. We didn't see the comments. So. Okay. Uh, under on the order of conditions under B findings. Yep. My question is, and I I'm not sure be, is there's boxes to be checked off there. Right. Yep. 
And, you know, I, I guess I, you know, a lot of times, you know, Priscilla was the one that did a lot of this. Yep. And uh, so, 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 so you so, basically so. can check everything off except for land containing shellfish. So when, when the interests of the act mention shellfish, it's actually referring to coastal waters. Okay. Shellfish okay. out here, the mussels and stuff you see in inland waters, they're actually under the section for protection of fisheries. So the riverfront, the, the bank, the land underwater, those are all presumptive, pre, uh, you presumptively protect all the interests of the act. So you can check everything off except for shellfish. Okay. So what Louis talking about for the other guys who don't have a copy in front of you is just the order of conditions filling it out. That's all. Yeah, yeah when, you, when you go to sign the next one, we'll have to have the same thing on that, I believe, right, Mark? Is that, that's, that's the understanding then? Well, if, if you don't have a private water supply there, you don't have to check it off. Yeah. If you're out in the wood, if you're out beyond the range of uh, municipal water, you don't have any public water supply. So you wouldn't have to check that off. You can yeah. check it off. It doesn't really matter. It's better to check off too much than too little. Okay. Yeah, now that I wasn't sure. I didn't want to check off anything that, you know, I shouldn't have there. Okay, so in under the order conditions. So you're going to, did your guys already issue that or you're getting ready to issue it or what? Well, we're waiting for one signature. Oh, okay. Is she going to do that online on EDEP? Uh, I mean, I can work with her on the phone doing that. I'm I'm not sure. She's you know she's uh. I know she hasn't done it before. I don't think. Right. She said she wasn't sure what she's supposed to do. I talked to her today. Well, I can. That's what I'm here for. I can give her a hand. Right and. She won't be until Monday, so I, I can talk to her and yeah, what I, I can what I did, her. yeah, what I did do is we put in the order of conditions, and but I did but add, I did. and I don't know if I'm allowed to or not, okay. that during the meeting, Ty and Bond said that they were going to have a representative uh, inspector there every day. So I included under the uh, 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 order conditions, the engineering firm will be required to have a representative on site at all times during construction. I don't know if that's all did right. You talk, did you talk to Kevin and see if that was in the contract? Uh, no, I can I can do that, though. I would ask Kevin because you don't want to, you know, put an onerous burden on the town or you, instead of being on site just ask for weekly reports during construction okay you know like you've had other projects do you know right. a weekly email report to you yeah okay <clears throat> my right, hey, Louis, this is this is pete and i do recall though that uh, the rep from ty and bond said that was in their that was what they're planning to do is a, a daily well, person there you can require it if they, I mean, do you really want to require it versus just, well, here's what some commissions do. They, they give the authority to actually shut the project down or to make corrections if the plans are not being followed. I mean, that's your concern. Are the plans being followed, erosion controls being met, uh, dewatering, bypass pumping, is all that being done correctly? Does the uh, some commissions do require their that person, that engineering firm, to actually be responsible for making sure the project goes as proposed. Okay. So I don't know if, if you guys yeah. talked about that at all. Yeah, if you can, yeah. Um, yeah. I, um, I I concur with Pete Law that um, Ty and Bond's representative said that they 
absolutely intended to have a guy there every day to monitor the dewatering and the erosion control situation because um, the project has to move forward so quickly and then they might have to move the dewatering facilities a couple of times. Okay. So they didn't want to have any trouble. Okay. I mean, if you guys want to add that and they said they were going to do it, go for it. Yeah, no, and, that's that's why yeah, I put it in there just so it's, you know, it was in writing that that's what, you know, that they were right. going to have one. But I would still yeah. require them to contact you, Louie, or yeah. a commission member if something changes that you should be made aware of. Okay. All right, yeah, because, yeah, we, we haven't sent this out yet, so we can still... Still, you know, add that little bit or change, reword it. Okay. So, I think any any other comments there, Mark? Or no, no. I mean, I did, I did, I didn't attend the meeting. I didn't listen in. I just looked at the minutes and just wanted to make sure there were those minor corrections, just the technical details. That's all. Yeah. No. No. I, I I see where you know. Once you brought them out, I haven't really even looked at it. So. I will, uh, we will talk about it here and when we go over the minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, well, thank you, Mark. No problem. And so, Louie, it's uh, Bill Mayer, PC. Can I ask a yes. question? Uh, you can. Do we need to make a motion then to accept that emergency certificate or did I miss something? I know that Mark had, we went on a kind of a couple, a little bit of a tangent there. Should we just make that official? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we can make it official. Okay, yeah. I, I'll make I a motion what? to uh, Bill Mayor PC to accept the emergency certificate for the culvert on five and 10 for Mass DOT. Louis Mission, I'll second it. All in favor? Louis Mission, I. Bill Mayer, PCI. Yeah, Pete Law, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. And I think I heard Ben back there. Okay. I yes, sir. Ben Byrne, aye. Thank you. Yeah, what usually happens is just one, just I have to sign it to get it going, I guess. And that that's pretty much it. Just at the next meeting you're supposed to talk about it and well that's correct yep, yep. and so the motion in the minutes would be yeah the commission has ratified the emergency cert that you signed yep okay thank you again mark hopefully we don't have too many of these Okay. Uh, I agree. <laughs> for the uh, minutes now, has any everybody looked at them, or do they have them there in front of them at all? Or yep. Bill Mayor, PC, yes. Okay. Uh, Mark, uh, uh, if you go under under new business, we got. Uh, it says RDA for Kelleher Drive culvert on the uh, minutes last month. Yep. It should be an NOI because that's what it was a notice of intent for that culvert. So that has to be changed. Okay. And uh, uh, just below that tie in bond, it will. Talking about the mitigation efforts, will work will affect the 200 foot its riverfront area instead of the 200 foot buffer zone. It's considered a riverfront at 200 okay. foot because of the stream there. And down where it's the RDA motion made by myself. That should be a notice of intent also. And I think anybody else see anything that 
should be uh, added or changed or nope nope negative no nope. go mayor pc no um so I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as changed by louis mission um, Tim Melchie will second. All in favor, Louis Mission, aye. Tim Helchi, aye. Bill Mayor, PC, aye. P. Law, aye. Ben Byrne, aye. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think, uh, of course, it's kind of tough to have any uh, mail to review. I think it's and I haven't heard anything that's really pending, so I don't guess we have any mail to review. Uh, so I guess we uh, can set up for uh, the next month's meeting. I don't know what's what's scheduled, if anything, yet, but we can, uh, let's see, schedule it for, I think it's the 25th, June 25th, last last Thursday in uh, June. Does that look right? Anybody see uh, it? Yeah. That looks like me. Looks good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. The one. So, I guess we can uh, set it up for June 25th. And I'll keep you guys uh, updated on uh, on when to uh, go in and sign the uh, forms there. I got to talk to Sue Monday, so hopefully she can have them, you know, done up, ready to be signed Tuesday. Okay, Did that work. Bill Mayor yeah. PC, yes, works for me. Okay. Oh, what is it? Seven, seven fifty. We can call it. I guess we can. Unless there's anything else out there, anybody? Any other comments out there in the uh, virtual good world? Good you guys. Glad you're. Uh, glad everybody's still healthy. Good to see you. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Mark, you. for all the help. Thank you very much, Mark. All right. Good night. So maybe a meeting to, um, I mean, a motion to adjourn at 7.50. I have 7.48. That sounds fine. I'll second that, Louis Mission. Tim Hilchi, aye. Ben Bill Mayor Mission, aye. aye. Louis Mission, aye. <laughs> I guess everybody's ready. <laughs> yeah, he lie. No, that, that went pretty good. Uh, yeah. yeah, good meeting, Louie.